I've just been working on this Bush radio here. It's been great fun to work on, namely because it's been thoroughly infested with these little brown cockroaches down here. These are the infamous brown plastic encapsulated film capacitors made by the British company Hunts. Now, the weakness of these is the plastic case goes brittle with either age or age and heat and you can just touch them sometimes while they're while they're in circuit and the casing will just fall apart like this one and of course that uh, lets the moisture in I've got one set up here on the Heathkit, Heathkit capacitor checker uh, the capacitor is rated for 400 volts let's see how leaky, I've got the capacitor checker set at 150 volts let's have a look at that magic eye I'd say that was pretty leaky. Let's set it up 250 volts. There you go, very leaky. Utterly useless. Um, obviously, they weren't designed to still be working 50 or 60 years later. But even so, that's one. There's one good reason. Not only the uh, do I get rid of these wax capacitors. I also get rid of all these hunts because 99% of the time they're leaky. This is the key at St. Ives. So I'm standing on the old town bridge. And as you can see, the river's really flooded at the moment. I subscribed to on YouTube, 1950s transistor radios, recently posted a video showing a European set and one of the questions was why do European sets have all the controls and the dial on top of the radio and I think one reason was um, that they were used as second radios within cars as I guess factory fitted radios at that time were, were uncommon. Um, I don't know uh, I was only four or five um, uh, in the late 1960s. Um, but I just wanted to show Matt some uh, UK radios that were specifically marketed marketed towards car owners. And this is the Ferguson Auto Twin. Um, obviously the word Auto Twin um, has got car connotations. This one's got a car button here which switches the uh, internal ferrite aerial out and there's a connection for a car aerial. This is the Dynatron Rally as you can see again um, aimed towards car owners um, who like a little bit of motorsport um, and this one's got a car button here to switch the internal ferrite aerial out. Um, and This is the Roberts R600 again this has not got a, um, a button but um, there's a definite uh, connection there for a car aerial. This is the car aerial connection that was used in all in all cars until relatively recently I guess certainly over here. Um, this would fit in the socket like that um, and then you could work your radio from the front there whether it's sat in a special bracket or on one of the parcel shelves or something. This Ferguson Auto Twin, um, this is quite interesting because the 
connection for the aerial is actually on the base of the radio so I'm guessing it might have come with brackets to fit in, fit in the radio or something I don't know because you couldn't stand it on its, you know, on its bottom now um, yeah so anyway just thought Matt would like to see some of these radios